Is it recording? Yes. So welcome to ECO 501, section number two. Sorry, section number one, uh, week nine. In this week, we are going to discuss oligopoly. So let me go to the screen share first. Does somebody, uh, can, can uh, uh, is there anybody in the class who, who knows the word oligos? What does oligos mean? What does the word oligos mean? Is there anybody in the class who knows the uh, meaning of oligos? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say since we have a two hour uh, limit today, oligos means few. So when we use the word few, we definitely mean something more than two, but not too many. So the extreme case of an oligopoly is that we have two decision makers, which we call duopoly. <clears throat> After that, we can have few. Few is usually not more than five. So when we have a market where there are minimum two, maximum say four or five or six firms, we call it a oligopoly. So today what we're going to do, we're going to do as we did before, part one will revisit perfect competition, the assumptions. Why will we do that? Because we are going to uh, break some assumptions of perfect competition. And based on that, we're going to move to oligopoly. Two, we're going to, uh, discuss the assumptions that, uh, uh, that of perfect competition we, we are going to break in order to get to oligopoly. Then we'll look at the types of oligopoly, the models of oligopoly, and at the end of today's uh, class, we're going to introduce game theory. Uh, uh, are you guys familiar with game theory? Is there anybody in the class who knows any a little bit about game theory? Yonai, is there anybody in the class who knows a little bit about game theory? No, sir. No, okay, lovely. The, uh, oh, oh, why am I sharing this? Okay, so let's start. Okay, <clears throat> these were the assumptions of perfect competition. Many buyers, many sellers, homogeneous, then uh, independent decision-making, symmetric information easy entrance and exit. Then what we said was, based on this, the implication of perfect competition was, number one, the market is a market of a commodity market. A commodity market is by definition a market where the same identical item is sold by everybody. So if we are looking at say Coca-Cola, uh, a 200 milliliter Coca-Cola or, or 500 milliliter Coca-Cola, whatever, it's the same item to the seller and the buyer and it sells at the same price throughout the country. Okay, main implication of com uh, perfect competition was that no seller, no buyer was large enough to influence the market outcome. That means the price at which a commodity will sell and how much of a commodity will sell. Today, we are going to break a few assumptions of perfect competition in order to come to oligopoly. So the first one that we are going to buy a break is few. A little while ago, we defined that few means uh, at least two, but not too many. So if we have few sellers who are dom uh, 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 operating in the market or the market is such that no more than four or five sellers can dominate, then each seller has a significant market share to influence. This influence can happen in two ways. A single farm can influence uh, uh, the remaining people, the remaining producers on the market. Two farms can get together in collusion. That means if uh, two farms, they may be the second and the third largest farm, they can merge. If they don't officially merge, they can uh, together make a decision in order to uh, influence the market share or the market dominance of the uh, largest firm. So when we have few sellers, decision is no longer independent decision making. How did we define independent decision making? Whatever I decide to sell, it's not going to influence your uh, the market, i.e. you, 
The reverse is also true. Whatever you decide to sell will not uh, influence my decision. So when we say that uh, each seller has a significant market share, okay, number three applies that the markets, uh, the firms can jointly also decide production or price setting. Now, in an oligopoly market, unlike perfect competition or uh, monopolistic competition, we may have oligopoly market where a homogeneous good is uh, sold. We may also have an oligopoly market where a differentiated goods is sold. This is uh, condition number four in the slide. For example, there are not too many crude oil uh, 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 exporting countries, right? Are there too many uh, petroleum and exporting countries? No, there are few. So they sell the same uh, crude oil because it's coming from the ground. When it comes to our country, we process it into diesel, octane, or petrol. So crude oil industry, there are few producers throughout the world, and these producers produce the same, same homogeneous good. Uh, an oligopoly can be also characterized by differentiation. For example, uh, the automobile industry. But when we talk about differentiation, the differentiation is very much real. Do you remember cosmetic differentiation and real differentiation from the previous week? Does anybody remember cosmetic differentiation and uh, real differentiation from the previous week? Does anybody remember? No, sir. No, sir. Sir, cosmetic, cosmetic, uh, same color, shadi, duita design. Tarmane, uh, uh, are real? Sir, real, ta, uh, sir, okay, real, ta, you, you forgot it. Okay, okay no problem. Uh, we, we, we'll try again. That is, don't you think that a Toyota car? and the Maruti Suzuki car are very much different from each other, quality-wise? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, because uh, uh, and at the same time, a Jaguar or a Mercedes-Benz is definitely different, uh, very much different from uh, a, a, a Toyota car. So real differentiation means when there is significant difference in the quality of the product. It's not cosmetic in the sense that, you know, we have for Toyota, same model car, one is blue, one is white. Uh, it's just, the color differentiation is just a cosmetic. It's, it's, uh, it's not that significant. But when the differentiation becomes significant, then uh, what happens? Uh, there is a quality difference and the one that is better quality, people will automatically be willing to pay a higher price. If you want to buy a Jaguar, definitely you cannot offer the seller the price of a Maruti Suzuki. So in uh, what happens, the products of differentiation in uh, uh, condition number five, it's not cosmetic. In most cases, it involves a lot of research and development. Definitely Apple phones are much better than uh, any other uh, low-end Android phones because Apple spends a lot of money on research and development. That's why, uh, the product differentiation in, uh, is real. So if the oligopoly market is selling um, uh, differentiated goods, there will be few sellers and the differentiation will be very much real. What is interdependency? We define independent decision-making by X's de decision does not uh, affect Y, Y's decision does not affect X. The moment we are introducing the word interdependent. That means X's decision influences Y. The reverse is also true. Y's decision also influences X. In the last class, I said that uh, there is a legal definition to or, an oligopoly, which was known as the Harfindal Hishman in Index. That is that when the top four firms have at least 50% of the market share, if that is the case, then that market is defined as an oligopoly. Today, what we will do, we will relax this assumption a little bit and then see 
uh, part three of our today's class that how many types of monopoly we have. Before I go to that part, is there uh, any questions from anybody? No, no sir. sir. Okay, lovely. Then how did we define few? We defined few as minimum two and then uh, uh, more than two, but not too many. This is how we defined the number few. Not less than five, oligopoly. Usually not more than five. Not more than five, okay. Uh, more uh, five or six, whatever, okay. So, okay, sir. And the definition that we have in condition number seven in this uh, slide, it says that the top four firms, this is a general definition. There may be some in markets where only two firms can supply. Uh, supply. There may be a market where or, uh, the, the, you will find top three firms who have more than 50%. And then you have uh, uh, another type of market that has 50%. So what we are going to do, we're going to do the examples in the context of uh, uh, USA, dominant single firms. Is there anybody in our class who doesn't use Gillet razors for shaving? The gentleman, do you use any? Yes, other? sir. Uh, uh, do you use Gillet? No, sir. Oh, you, uh, trimmer, you sir. Trimmer. Trimmer. Yes, sir. We use trimmers. Trimmers, acha acha. Very good. In the other section, everybody used Gillet. That's why I was asking. <laughs> okay, so I also trimmer. Use... Trimmer is very much cost effective, sir. Really? But is it good on your skin? Mm, uh, yes. If you if you use higher and trimmer, okay, okay, I, 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 I'll explore it next time then. In America, in the razor blade market, Chile con, uh, controls a eighty percent of the total market share. So if we use the Hartman Dill uh, Hishman index over here, that the top four firms, it's not going to apply because the nature of the market is such that uh, Chile has a dominant single firm. Number two is the uh, example of a duopoly farm. If we look at the uh, wide bodied aircraft market, 99% of the uh, planes in America were produced by two companies, Boeing 50% and D Airbus DC 49%. Uh, so the two of them uh, uh, had 99% market share. Tripoly farms, we have, uh, uh, the more the number of firms are increasing as dominant firms, the more uh, the more the, their market share is falling. Look at the soft drinks in Coca-Cola in America. Thirty-seven percent was Coca-Cola, thirty percent was Pepsi-Cola, and twenty-one percent was Dr. Pepper. Is there anybody in our class who has uh, uh, had Dr. Pepper? No, sir. Or oh, there's nobody who has tasted Dr. Pepper. I don't think we okay. get in Nepal. You don't get in Nepal, no? Nah? No, we, we have it in Bangladesh. Okay. I've seen it, but is there anybody in the class who, who has tried Dr. Pepper? No, sir. Okay, lovely. In Bangladesh, this same market, instead of Dr. Pepper, you will find Mojo. Uh, um, uh, my uh, little cousin, says, uh, cousin brother, he has a, a little uh, the, uh, neighborhood uh, uh, Mudit Dogan grocery shop. So one day he was telling me that people in Dhaka city drink more Mojo then they drink Coke and Pepsi. So even in Dhaka, if you look at the market share uh, data, you will find that the soft drinks company is ruled by three companies. And then we have less concentrated, uh, less concentrated ol oligopolies. Uh, this is uh, the worldwide tobacco company, four producers, Philip Morris, 16%, British American 13, uh, uh, Japan tobacco 11 and imperial tobacco 10%. Now, that index that we talked about, the Harf, uh, Harf, Harfinder uh, Hishman index, that index is how many firms to make 50% of the market share. In the first case, there was only one firm. Gillet it, itself was almost 80%. Second case, two firms made up 50% of the market share. Uh, Boeing and Airbus. 
In the third case, three firms made up uh, 50%, 37, 67, 88. In the case of uh, tobacco, uh, four firms made up 50% of the total market share. Now, before we move on to the next topic, can you think why it is that in, in the tobacco market, there are four dominant firms, but in the white bodied aircraft market, there are only two dominant firms. In the worldwide tobacco market, there are four dominant firms in America, Philip Morris, British American, Japan Tobacco and Imperial Tobacco. But in the white bodied aircraft uh, market, there were only two dominant firms. Why do you think this is the case? Maybe because of the market or the investment. Sir, entry no. barrier. Okay, who said entry barrier? Uh huh. Who said entry barrier? Sir, it's me, Faika. Faika, yes. Uh, well, how, well, your answer is correct. Entry barrier can happen for 101 reasons. In the case of the uh, worldwide tobacco market, uh, these items are not too much different from each other. Number one. Number two, it's easy for people to switch, isn't it? Yes, if, sir. If somebody want, doesn't like one brand of cigarette, they can easily switch to another one. Switching cost is low. And, and the prices are very similar to each other. It's yes, not sir. like, you know, Maruti Suzuki car versus, say, uh, Mars uh, yeah, Mercedes Benz cars. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's why in that market, you will find the, there are four dominant firms that control 50% of the market. In the case of Gilet, Gilet has a, uh, some natural uh, uh, historic brand loyalty. Okay. My, uh, I mean, if you look, uh, ask your grandpa, he, he, he might also say, he might agree that yes, my <coughs> razor was Gilet razor. So uh, uh, Gilet has a, a very big brand loyalty. Duopoly, you see, it's impossible to wake up tomorrow morning and uh, you, you want to buy, make a, a aircraft mark, uh, a carrier. There's huge amount of research and development involved in it, okay? And then you see soft drinks, see? It's easier to enter the market or, or, or the uh, uh, drinks here are not that different from each other. So, this is one thing that we might think about that why are there uh, why are there more or less uh, uh, in one market there are four dominant firms in another market there are three in another one there is two in another one there is one so as fika said there's some entry barriers now what is the nature of these entry barriers this is what we want to think about later okay acha now we go to part 3 i think oligopoly models. This is, since we are, this is an online class. Unfortunately, I can't show it in detail. Let, let me stop the share. Okay, Augustine Puno, he was a French mathematician. He was also a civil bureaucrat and he was involved in some administrative roles as well. So he came up with this very simple model that uh, there is a spring water. Spring water belongs to nature. So there is no cost involved in uh, collecting the water. It's free, it's a natural good. But two firms, only two firms um, operate. And these two firms supply the entire village or, or the vicinity. Now, if you are a buyer, will you distinguish between the quality of the two sellers? There's, uh, extracting the water from the same source. As a buyer, will you distinguish between the two sellers? Will you think that seller A's uh, mineral water or spring water is different from the seller B's? No, no, no. Because they're coming from the same source, same spring water, okay? So bu uh, buyers uh, consider their product to be identical, homogeneous. So what happens is if uh, uh, seller A charges a higher price, everybody will go to seller B because switching cost is very simple. And it's the same, uh, same uh, thing. Okay, but what Kurno did, 
Uno looked at this game from an output setting model. What is an output setting model? An output setting model is if the total demand is 100 uh, uh, cans per day, okay? And if I am a uh, producer A, then I know how much B will supply. Do you, under, uh, do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. Sir. The total total demand for the uh, water is 100 cans per day. So I am a producer A, you are producer B. If I know that producer as producer B, when you, uh, you will produce 30, what do I do? I produce 70 units of water, right? Yes, sir. Right, sir. Okay, now the crucial assumption of this model was, I will assume that you will not change your decision. Is that a, a, fair, a fair assumption? No, sir. Over time, you will definitely change your decision. If you, if, even if I predict correctly that you are going to uh, make 30, uh, 30 units, then you will, change your, uh, uh, you will change your decision over time. So the main problem with this model was if the total demand is Q, then uh, uh, A supplies this amount, B supplies this amount. So if A knows how much B will produce, then A will just produce the remainder, Q minus QB. Now, if I can correctly predict how much B will produce, say 30 units, I just produce 70 units and that's it. The game ends. Game means the decision making ends. But if we play this game again and again, then the assumption that uh, 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 sub, uh, producer B will keep his amount fixed is a very, very, very strong assumption. Do we agree on this? Do you think that B will uh, keep his uh, 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 amount fixed at 30 all the time? No, sir. No, sir. No. So if we play no. the game, if we play the game um, repeatedly again and again, then what happens? Uh, B will not remain, uh, will, will not keep at 30. But after some time, I will be able to predict how much B can uh, extract. B will also be able to predict how much I can extract. So uh, at some point, the game will settle down and depending on uh, what B does, I make a decision. Depending what I do, B makes a decision. So the decision making there is interdependent decision making. Okay. Okay, sir. And how, uh, what is an equilibrium? An equilibrium is a situation when given what I'm doing, you have no uh, uh, incentive to change. The reverse is also true. Given that you're producing this amount of output, I have no incentive to change. What's number seven? Okay. Have you heard of cartel? Has, have you guys heard of the word cartel? Yes, sir. Okay. Cartel, cartel is a, is a, what should I say? It's a formal agreement between two sovereign nations. For example, Bangladesh and uh, Nepal, and say India, because India is in between the two countries, the three countries make a, a deed that uh, this amount of water will pass through down to the uh, Bay of Bengal, because there's a common river, etc. This is acceptable internationally. But in most countries, cartels are totally illegal. It is not possible for farms to openly set prices or determine how much they will produce. That's why when we talk about a cartel, a cartel is usually between sovereign nations like OAPEC. This is Organization for Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries. OPEC is the other one. Uh, organization of petroleum exporting countries has anybody heard of this one OPEC does has anybody heard of OPEC no sir OPEC hoche 
organization of banana exporting countries. Uh, this is a cartel mainly between uh, countries of the West Indies were very small and their main cash crop is uh, bananas. So they determine how much, uh, uh, you know, the world price of bananas will be. Anyhow, there are informal cartels. They are not legal, but in Bangladesh, we know them as syndicates. I, I'm sure people, uh, uh, the, the Bangladeshi people in this class, they're familiar with the word syndicates, right? Yes, sir. The syndicates are not legal. Uh, they are totally illegal, but these firms, they jointly decide that how much they will produce or how much a, pr a price will be. For example, to, uh, tonight, Ramzan will start and no matter how good intention the government has to keep the prices uh, uh, within a uh, tolerable limit, do you think there will not be syndicates who will raise the price? Syndicate thakbe na jara price raise kore felbe? Yes sir. Um, already bere gye thhe sir, shop to shop guys. Ami to I like tormuch, melon. So today my wife told me that uh, she went to the uh, market and she saw that, that the melons were selling at 50 taka per kg. Just two days ago it was 35. Yes sir. Th and, uh, 35 to 30. 30 to 35, 30. right, correct. Yes. That, was, that was the price. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I, I went to Manik Gons two weeks ago, and from there I bought quite a few at a, just 25 taka per kg. Okay, so that same thing now, just because Ramzan is starting, the, the, these uh, sellers have you know made a pact, and, and they're selling it at 50 taka per kg, or, or, or almost double or, or totally double. What we are interested in is not whether a cartel is legal or not. We are interested in what factors contribute to successful pollution in an industry? What factors contribute to successful pollution in an industry? Here are the, num uh, here are the factors. The first factor is if the number and size of sellers is less, then pollution becomes difficult. What is the common sense argument behind this? If the number of sellers decreases, pollution becomes difficult. Can somebody tell me why? If the number of sellers is five, pollution is easy to do. If the number of sellers is three, pollution is difficult to do. Uh, maybe because buyer has less options. No, no, we're not talking about buyers here. Uh, buyers are le less options. The thing is, the main thing is, is somebody going to retaliate? Look at number four, five. If there are two sellers, a Boeing and a Airbus, if the two of them decide that, okay, let, let us uh, pollute. If for some reason, Boeing says, Salaam Alaikum, I'm, I'm leaving. Then the whole deal will collapse and the industry might collapse, right? But if there are four and five uh, people, if one person leaves the pact, will will uh, will that person affect the industry that much? No, sir. So, so what, the first argument is, if the number of and size of the sellers is uh, decreases, pollution becomes difficult because each each seller will have more market power, more market share with with which they can retaliate. Or, or threat, give a threat of leaving the uh, pact. This is the one that we have already discussed, product differentiation. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, sir. Pollution is a competitive market. Pollution is a good thing. Why? Pollution is a good thing. Pollution is a good thing. Difficult. No. Difficult. That, that's what I'm saying. In the difficulty, when I when I seller better thake, then our pollution that our increase would say. Seller better pollution. There is a possibility that pollution can happen. This is what I'm saying. If the number of sellers increase, sir, our question is pollution or fallacy. 
মানে ধরেন আমি একজন কনজিউমার হ্যাঁ আমি দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে বোয়িং মানে এয়ারবাস ইন্ডাস্ট্রিতে দুইটা পার্টি আছে দুইটা প্লেয়ার আছে হ্যাঁ বা ধরেন सपोज স্যার এখানে পাঁচটা পার্টি আছে এখন এটা শ্রিঙ্ক হয়ে স্যার দুইটাতে নেমে আসলো আহা আমার জন্য কিন্তু মানে তার মানে অটোমেটিক্যালি আমি মানে আমি যে টিকিটটা আগে 10000 টাকা পেতাম সেটা এখন ডিফিনিটলি 15000 টাকা পাবো এরকম কি বিষয়টা না ওকে লাভলি আই 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 উইল অ্যাড্রেস দ্যাট ওয়ান এ লিটল বিট লেটার ওকে ওকে স্যার ওকে এটা সামনে আছে উই উইল ডিসকাস ইওর एग्जांपल ইন লিটল ওয়াইল ওকে ওকে ইফ প্রোডাক্ট ডিফারেন্সিয়েশন ইজ ভেরি রিয়েল ভেরি রিয়েল ফর एग्जांपल uh suzuki maruti uh, cars and uh what do you call it jaguar cars do you think that the two will uh, pollute if the product differentiation is very real because uh suzuki maruti cars are very much different from uh, the, what you call it jaguar cars then pollution is very unlikely to happen Yes, sir. Cost structure is also the same thing. If I am too efficient compared to you, will you have a, a, a incentive to uh, a mane pollute with me? No. Because since I am too uh, efficient, I can I, I can uh, you know give a threat at any moment. So when the cost structures between the farms are too different, one is much much more efficient than the other one, then the possibility of pollution becomes weak. when fixed costs are very high uh, previously we said that if the fixed cost is very high then entering into the market is high at the same time getting out of the market is also becomes difficult so if our fixed costs are high uh, then i won't have an incentive to pollute with another farm because if the other farm retaliates i can't give the market just like that number 4 is the size and frequency of orders Uh, what's the condition look at it pollution is more likely when orders are small frequent and regular when orders are big and orders are not frequent they come seasonally then pollution is less likely to happen why do you think so when orders are large okay for example uh, i think you have that company in nepal do you have daras in nepal namsho yes sir yes sir we have oh great uh, we have daras in bangladesh as well so we can uh, compare the two in, in uh, so daras is a very big uh, uh, you know market here so what happens is if daras and uh, the daras takes care uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, orders compared to a small or online delivery so why will daras not collude with them or they will not collude with daras because daras uh, controls a lot of the orders huge amount of orders if daras retaliates then the whole pact will collapse do you get the logic now yes sir and uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the sum total this is the summary of all the conditions what is the possibility of threat uh, uh uh you know if the possibility of threat is very high just think about these conditions then those uh, pollutions will not happen acha now we look at another type of models price leadership okay price leadership means there can be two types of price leaderships say there are five firms in the oligopoly market five farms are not of say, same size they are different sizes any farm can declare a price the others follow this is barometric price leadership another another form is that the dominant farm the largest farm declares a price all the smaller farms follow so if the oligopoly is a price setting oligopoly then what happens is uh, in one market which we will see in a little, little while any firm can declare a price and everybody else follows in another type of market we will see that the dominant firm that is the largest firm on the market they will determine a price they declare a price everybody else will follow 
So let's look at the screen share. Barometric, AJ, uh, who was asking about uh, air airline tickets? Uh, no, it wasn't you, Faika. There was another person who was talking about Kazi Bhaiya, Kazi Bhaiya. Acha Kazi. Okay, Kazi was saying, uh, uh, mentioning airline tickets. For example, uh, we have mainly a few airlines, Bangladesh Biman, we have Novo, we have uh, Regent. Uh, do we have anything else? US Bangla. US Bangla, right. So these are the four companies that we have. Now, in this market, have you seen that the uh, companies, they match their prices very, uh, uh, very nicely? So for example, if uh, Novo charges 4,000, US Bangla will charge maybe maybe 200 taka more or 200 taka less. Have you noticed that? Yes, sir. The, the, yeah. prices, the prices of each of the airlines is very, very similar. This is no coincidence. At the same time, these uh, companies are not cartels. Legally, they cannot, uh, you know, get together and set prices. Okay. So what happens? Maybe at the beginning of Ramzan, uh, well, not from today, tomorrow, to ne next seven days, all airlines will be closed. But uh, maybe uh, Novo declares a price. And then the remaining follow. Another time, Biman de declares a price. Everybody else follows. So when we have barometric price leadership, over here, it's not, uh, the thing is, it doesn't matter who the firm is or how big or how large, somebody declares a price, everybody else follows. Dominant leadership, dominant price leadership. This is the other thing, because what happens is, in the dominant case, the firm that is larger, it has enjoys customer loyalty or it has some low cost structure in relation to other firms this firm declares a price okay other firms follow in fear of retaliation by the large firm i'm giving uh, an example over here profit sharing by apple streaming i think i can give this example dara's setting terms and conditions Okay. Uh, uh, is... uh, yes. Sir, a e jagate to sir ashole tara setting the mane mane price leadership er khetre sir ha. Amar question ta hocche je ekhane to ashole pollution kom thakar karone to sir sir price leadership ta toiri hocche tai na ki sir. Hm? Pollution ta so uh, if that is what you are thinking, then what is the factor behind that? These were the factors, right? Which one, which, which of the, which one uh, do you think uh, is applicable? Is it because of the number of sellers decreases? Is it because of the number four size and frequency of orders, etc.? Is it because of cost structures? Is it because of product differentiation? Taras and parts, dominant, sir. Parts, parts actually, it's dominant for all of them. If somebody can threat, because it, uh, 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 so your argument was number four, right? In the context of Daras? Exactly, sir. That's, that's what I'm saying. In the context of, uh, you were looking at, I think, where is it? A, a, a airline industries. Airline industry, the key hoche. It does it matter who who declares the price first? If Biman declares a Dhaka Chitago rate as say hundred dollars, everybody else will more or less price similarly. Two hundred taka plus minus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next day, uh, uh, next day, US Bangla may declare uh, everybody else you know price, uh, prices the same route, uh, similar as uh, similar two hundred taka plus minus. So. This is called barometric price leadership. Another one is dominant price leadership. Uh, is anybody familiar with Apple uh, price streaming? Is anybody? 
Uh, you're not. That's okay. Let me say how, how it works. I'm not sure about the exact uh, streaming market at the moment, but when streaming started, Apple entered the market and Apple just monopolized it. How? Apple's, uh, if you can uh, show, uh, stream your market on Apple's platform, people will buy because Apple has a, uh, a brand loyalty, which Apple has uh, acquired over, over time. So what Apple did, uh, uh, yeah, what's uh, Steve Jobs? He, uh, if there were 10 sellers in the, in the stream who are, who are going to participate, he used to declare, okay, you get this amount of money, you get this amount of revenue, you get this amount of revenue. Uh, Steve Jobs literally fixed who will get what. Now, why did the other uh, uh, firms uh, listen to Steve Jobs? Factors number four. Factors number four, correct. Now let me give you another example. In China, throughout the whole year, they allow only 36 foreign films to enter their market. Only 36. The, they, they have a sensor board. Uh, you you uh, submit your film to China, the sensor board, and the sensor board de decides 36 mark films. The sensor board has the full authority to uh, accept your film, reject your film. Now, if I'm a Bangladeshi, filmmaking, film producer. Why do I want to enter the China market? China has the highest number of cinema halls in the world. Do you know? Does anybody know that? Did anybody know? No, sir. China has more than 60,000 cinema halls. If, if we ask a, a question uh, just from the uh, uh, air, we, in which country are the cinema halls uh, 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 the maximum? Nine out of 10 people will say India. Because of Bollywood, People have this, you know, stereotype uh, perception that in, maybe India has the highest number of cinema halls. No, the highest number of cinema halls is in China. Uh, a few years ago, it was 60,000, maybe it's more now. So if a person has a platform where other people can enter, like the Apple streaming, or uh, for example, uh, 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 Chinese, uh, Chinese film industry, uh, film, uh, film market, or e even for Daraz, Daraz is a big platform where many sellers can sell their items. Daraz will take the responsibility of distribution. We have another company in Bangladesh called Evali, et cetera. Why do they set, set the terms and conditions? Now let us go down, down to that condition that we started because they have a dominant, dominant, uh, uh, dominancy in the market. That's why they can set the price for each person and each person they follow. So what is 11? Oh, okay. Why is collusions unstable? If you do a course on strategic management, you will come across uh, this concept. And in the context of America, collusions have never lasted more than seven years. This is this is just a rule of thumb number, but the thing is that pollutions don't last for too long. What is the deal? Uh, what is the uh, logic behind this? Can you think? Why do pollutions uh, not last for too long? Pollution is shot, I guess, sir. Business cycle at a relation also. Okay. You and I today make a pact. Okay, the two of us who are going to set prices together, with the two of us who are, will follow each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, after ten years, one of us is definitely going to become more powerful than the other, right? Cost-wise, market share-wise, brand image-wise. Yes, uh, sir. But uh, so over time, uh, uh, you cannot expect that w whatever the stability exists today will last uh, for 10 years down the line. That's for, this is one of the main reasons why historically pollutions have always been unstable. If you look at, uh, uh, unless, the only exception is cartel because cartels are made by uh, sovereign nations. That's why cartels have su survived. But uh, apart from that, all the tacit pollutions that we, indirect pollutions that we observe 
in any country they don't sustain because there is a something called cooperation for pollutions to su uh, su uh, be successful we have to implement a cooperation for cooperation to be successful what we need to do is cooperation is not successful over time because of the prisoners dilemma which we will address now acha this is the game theory part so what do we do shall, shall we give a 5 minute break before we start game theory okay sir shall, shall i give a 5 minute break okay sir okay so uh, right now uh, in my clock it's 451 uh, we'll come back at uh, 56 okay Okay, okay so okay we'll come back uh, let me stop the recording then